Drop whatever you're doing, Greta. I've got an opening for a new story, and I'd like you to type it out. Ready? Well, then. When she realized the danger, it was already too late. For her own violent death hovered near. She'd wanted to uncover the truth about her friend's disappearance. That's why she maneuvered to get the job. Just a pretext to enter that house. For it was there that her friend was last seen alive. And welcome to Hello, This is the Doom Show. I am Richard. Folks, welcome to your Saturday night special or your Sunday morning breakfast podcast. I'm not here to judge. Um, I'm here with freaking Greg Amortis. Oh, my God. What up? What up? What up, Richard? It's been a long time coming. Bro. Yes. We've been talking about doing something. Um, I still need to re- re-invite myself back to your show. Yes. Although you'd already invited me, so technically. <laughs> That's right. Now I just got to go through with that, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I invite myself everywhere. Hey, nothing wrong with that. But uh, uh, Greg's here. We're going to talk about freaking Amok from 1972, uh, written and directed by Silvio Amadio, or as I uh, mislabeled him in Giallo Meltdown, uh, Silvio Amado, because I'm an, an idiot who uh had to do um his own uh his own editing on his own books cuz I have no budget for an editor. <laughs> <laughs> so in case you're looking for some great um well-researched writing, mm-hmm. check out my books anyway. Sure. Uh, Giallo Meltdown a Moviethon Diary and Giallo Meltdown 2 all available on amazon.com or .gov, however you use your Amazon. Eventually, there'll be a government, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> the world domination. Not our laptop, lifetime, but maybe one day. That was probably a Black Mirror episode or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, we're talking to Muck. Um, this is uh, going to get spoiled. So if you've never seen a Muck, uh, we're not going to do every single scene. We're going to do a, a nice representation, but we're absolutely going to spoil the ending. So give it a look. Um, I know, Greg, you were struggling with finding this one. Yes. Yep. And I had an old, 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 I won't say black market. It was gray market. Uh, DVD. It wasn't a DVD art. It actually had like the real silver on the back of the DVD. But the artwork was like totally cheapo. And it was the uncut version of the film. But it was full frame. Mm-hmm. Why would you ever want to chop the frickin', uh Sides off. It was obviously a VHS rip, but it was very nice. It was watchable. And here we are, fast forward to the magical year of 2024, and we have got at least a download. Yes, and it, it was actually, you're right, really pretty. Yeah. But when you look up to try to buy this thing, yeah, it was like 60 to to $100. So I was like, yeah. Right. <laughs> Maybe it's worth it. I don't know. We'll, talk, we'll find out. We'll, oh, man. I Even if it is, it isn't. I, I, <laughs> I'm one of those people who I will just walk away. Yeah. I'll be like, whoa, that's over. That's like 40 bucks for that movie. I'll see you guys later. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't need it that bad. Uh, but yeah, so this has alternate titles. This is some great alternate titles. Um, I'm going to butcher some Italian for you. It's uh, Alla Ricerca or Ricerca del Piacere. Oh my God. Uh, I'm not Italian. It's In Pursuit of Pleasure is the translation there. And um, this movie is, is definitely pursuing something. Sure. Pursuing eels. <laughs> um, it's also known as hotbed of sex. 
Yes, that's what I should have named it. I found the poster. I mean, not in <laughs> no. my not in my house. I just found Uh-oh. this poster on the, on the internet, uh, mm-hmm. where you find all hot beds of sex, <laughs> and then uh, leather and whips was another one, Ooh. which I think would be very disappointing to somebody. Yeah, no, there's no whips. There's not even a spanking in this movie. <laughs> No, that's true. Now that that would go good with Stevie Nicks' song. Remember the uh, leather and lace song? See, we could have mm. tied that together. Maybe have a little of that backtrack music. Leather and lace is definitely a gateway to whips. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some reason, this also had the title Maniac Mansion. I don't know how they got that either. Um, technically, the villa that these characters inhabit could be a mansion. Yeah. And finally, the Spanish title was Fury of the Assassin. Mm. Also not accurate. <laughs> not accurate at all. <laughs> I like, what was a hot bed of sex? If you, if you don't install a mm. hot bed of sex in your maniac mansion, you're not you're doing <laughs> something wrong. But uh, I found a great trailer. I sent Greg this trailer and I told you, like, don't watch this at work. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <though>. Mm. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Uh, but this trailer, they put a lot of work into this to selling a muck. And so um, I normally edit this these down, but this is a hot three minutes. So <laughs> here is the trailer for a muck. Soon the film A Muck will be playing in this area. Because of the nature of the film and the nudity and sexuality involved, we have made cuts in the coming attractions trailer that you are about to see. However, when Amok plays in this theater, you will see it complete with nothing cut out. Amok is the story of a sex-crazed madman. He lived on an isolated island where he lured beautiful girls. First, he only watched, but then he did much more. A few days before she disappeared, we couldn't help noticing a change had come over her, as if she were being tormented by something. There were always new victims for his depraved desires. Beautiful young faces and bodies who were thrown into an explosion of sexual frenzy by drugs they never knew they took. He forced them to do what he wanted. And he wanted everything. When he was finished ravaging their bodies, they disappeared forever. over now. You must die. Take her. A muck is a movie so real, so mind-boggling that you want to leave. <laughs> but you won't be able to. Hey, my friend Bernie, he told me this picture was strong. It's strong. What do I think of this picture? I think the people who did it ought to, they ought to be arrested. <laughs> what a picture. You know, and I, I don't see anything wrong with sex and nudity. I never saw so much sex and nudity in a movie. I can't believe it. They would put that on a screen. A muck. 
a film that had to wait for the permissive 1970s before it could be made. I, I love the people, the three people or four people at the end that they talk to about how hot this movie is. I've never seen so much sex on TV before. <laughs> And even better, there's posters for a totally different movie behind them. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to do with it. It's so good. That whoever distributed Amok was uh they were very special. Yeah. They should have had somebody going, Phil, Phil, filthy be Phil, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, so good. Oh god. So the synopsis from uh from good old IMDB is the secretary of a writer and his wife investigates the disappearance of her lover, their previous secretary, and finds herself the target of the couple's erotic desires. And a murder plot. <laughs> yeah, let's emphasize the, the sex part. Don't worry about murder plot. We'll murder plot. Murder plot. <laughs> <laughs> we said that part real fast so she wouldn't pay attention. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Silvio Amadio, uh, he did uh, several films. This, of course, spoilers is my favorite of his films that I've seen. Um, but he also did uh, Smile Before Death. Which I didn't dislike that movie. I think I actually gave that thing like a seven and a half or eight. I'll tell you what. We have already recorded an episode on that. Ooh, I can't wait to hear it. Mark stopped by and we did that one. It was a lot of fun. Okay, cool. I mean, I'll say, I'll say what my favorite of his is. But of his movies of this type, mm -hmm. um, Amok is my favorite. Because, of course, he did... So young, so lovely, so vicious, the tongue twister, mm -hmm. um, and a few others. But the movie I love um, is called Ill Medium from 1980, which I am so glad I have a download of because there is no, there is nothing. <laughs> so that's not even VHS, huh? Mm -mm. No, it's great. I will, um, will totally send it to you. I like it. I love the poster, man. Actually, kind of, kind of creepy little poster. Like yeah, that. there's, there's an alternate one with uh, the, the hands doing like, a, there's like a overhead shot of a seance because it's a movie that has dueling seances. <gasps> oh, you got me sold already, <laughs> man. It's, it's insane. It's totally insane. I, I love that movie. It's great. Uh, so young, so lovely, so vicious. What is this? Is this a giallo? Obviously it's, not. It gets tagged as a giallo, like everything does on. <laughs> IMDb <laughs> now. Um, but it's like another one of those uh, girl shows, younger girl shows up and uh, this disgusting couple has their lives ruined because they're assholes. Okay. You know, sort of like this movie. <laughs> Although Barbara Boucher is less of a dick. There you go. Much, much less, much less. Got our girl Dagmar in it, so it ought to be good, right? Yeah. I mean, Dagmar, I'd, I'd watch her do her taxes. She's <laughs> so beautiful, so beautiful. Uh, but this uh, has music by a composer I'm not familiar with, uh, Tio Usueli. And damn, I never, I, mean, I remember the music being okay. Mm -hmm. But with this viewing, man, the music is awesome. Love it. I loved it. Too. I, man, there's scenes in here we'll get to that it just, it was really, really oh, yeah. punchy. Hits so hard. Uh, cinematographer was uh, Aldo Giordani. And uh, I didn't get much about his career that stuck out to me. But uh, one of the producers of this, Roberto Palagi, has a giallo that, much like this film, needs a Blu-ray. And that is Bloodlink. Bloodlink has the incomparable Michael Moriarty, who um, I read an interview with Michael Moriarty. And he talked about how he wanted to be the next Marlon Brando. And I was like, well, you're batshit crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so you're halfway there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, also in uh, a patron saint of Hello, This is the Doom show, uh, Cameron Mitchell is in uh, Bloodlink. And <laughs> true to form, he is sweaty. He, he, he plays a boxer, like a retired boxer who's always jogging everywhere. So he's sweating. So it's sweaty Cameron Mitchell. It's what you want. Yeah. Um, as for characters, we've got some extremely familiar faces. Uh, as Richard Stewart, the, the villainous man of this, this film, we've got Farley Granger, who is like, they should introduce his voice before they introduce him. Because, mm. man, Farley Granger's voice, he, he utters a line in this that's one of my favorite moments in the movie. I'll talk about that later. Uh, but he was in The Prowler. 
and So Sweet, So Dead, and uh, another giallo like dangling in the breeze without a Blu-ray, uh, The Red-Headed Corpse, which you can usually find that one on like a bootleg. Yeah. Pretty cheap. Yeah, I don't own it, but I have seen it. Uh, Barbara Boucher is in this as Greta Franklin. She's our, our amateur detective. You've got to have an amateur detective in your giallo. And who better than Barbara Boucher? I mean, absolutely. If I'm remembering correctly, this was the first time I ever saw her was in this movie. Oh, wow. I think I could be mixing that up with something else because she was in so much stuff. Yeah. But this one, I really remember her. And of course, um, Rosal um, yeah. she plays uh, Richard's wife, El- Eleonora. And uh, this was definitely the first time I saw her mm-hmm. um, because I I remember watching this and Lady Frankenstein around the same time. Yeah. And just being blown away completely. What else was Rosalba in? I mean, she was in Girl in Room 2A. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> I, you know, what's so funny is I always talk about how much I love that film and I've still not watched that Blu-ray. Right. Who released that? Oh, that was, um, that was Mondo, I believe. Mondo. Okay. Yep. And that is one of the worst car chases ever filmed in it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so good. As our detective, our, our actual card-carrying detective, Il Commissario Antonelli, played by Nino Segarini, who I thought this was the only movie I'd seen with him. That is not true. Um, he's in Beyond the Door. I've not seen that. Oh, you're in for a treat. Nice. Oh, boy. Um, I'm assuming you've seen maybe one or two Exorcist ripoffs. Yes, I have. <laughs> this is like the granddaddy of okay. Exorcist ripoffs. This one wasn't the one that got blocked. Like they, the cease and desist order came down, like on Abby, the the right. black exploitation one. Mm. Uh, this one it is a shameless ripoff of the Exorcist. Uh, it's it's absolutely great. You're in for a treat. And what's the name of it again? Beyond the Door. Wait a minute. Maybe I have seen Beyond the Door. See, that's what you surprised me. It's got um oh, that got the kids in it. Yeah. You've yeah. seen it. You've totally seen okay, it. I have. <laughs> it's got the kid happily <laughs> drinking out of a Campbell yes, soup can yeah. in the back seat. <laughs> Cussing like a sailor. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. You've you've been traumatized. Yeah, I was I, I was so surprised you said you hadn't seen it. I was like how did Greg miss this? Oh right. my God. Well, there you go. I don't remember who Nino plays in that, but I'm always up for a rewatch of that. Uh, Dino Mele. This was the one person who I was like, didn't remember he was in this movie. Yeah. Didn't remember this character. <laughs> <laughs> he plays Sandro. Um, he barely a character, but he is Eleonora's lover. His claim to fame was he was the kid actor. From uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. So he's the one who's, uh, as a kid, has the harmonica in his mouth in that pivotal scene they keep flashing back to. But then he grew up and did a bunch of other movies. You're going to hate me for this, but I've never seen it. It's three hours long. (laughs) Here's my thing. like Ian is introducing me to a bunch of spaghetti westerns slowly. So on Black Glove Mysteries, we always do Jallo, but now we're starting to squeeze a little, maybe a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he's, he's slowly introducing me to some. Oh, to some. man. They're like potato chips. Once <laughs> you start, you can't stop. No. Uh, well, Lietta, she does not like spaghetti westerns. Mm-hmm. Um, she's just like, no. Like, she'll, I, I have like begged her to say, I love Django, you know, the original Django. And because that's like, if you watch one western and never watch another one again, that's the one to do it. I love it. I love, I've seen it. My wife loved it too. <sighs> yeah. Man, it's just so great. But yeah, Once Upon a Time in the West is it's three hours. You got to commit. Um, there's probably a longer cut. There's probably like a four hour version out there. My favorite of of that dude, all of his Western stuff is for a few dollars more. I could watch that over and over again. Okay. But I definitely don't judge you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually own those. Ian sent me some Blu-rays. I think I've got all those on Blu-ray or oh, man. some That's form because he upgraded or something. Well, that's the way to do it. You know, don't watch them on VHS. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll get pen and scan whiplash. Oh, yeah. Ow. My neck hurts. So Umberto Rajo, another Giallo staple um, actor. He's in so much stuff. I, I love him. Um, he He's the king of doing 
like either a major role in a movie or a walk on butler role. He's he's great. And of course, <laughs> he's the butler in this movie. Um, of course, if he played the priest, then he would have been the killer. But, you know, <laughs> uh, we've got uh, in the flashbacks, we see Sally Reese. Uh, she is the one who uh, Barbara Boucher's character is trying to find. Uh, this is Patrizia Viotti, who uh, this poor girl, she was in two Giallo. Uh, well, uh, one Giallo, one Italian horror. One's Death Falls Lightly, which is fine. OK, I, I don't know. You're going to get to it, oh, but yeah. don't get excited. It's it's fine. <laughs> uh, and then she was in a really weird Italian horror movie called Night of the Damned. Uh, that's that's also OK. It was a year before this one. She had a major drug problem, according to Wikipedia, mm-hmm. um, and she had to retire from acting very early and lived a very short life, sadly. Mm. Um, and last but not least, as <laughs> our real main character, Rocco. Rocco. Got Petar Matronovich, who uh, was in Lady Frankenstein with uh, good old Russell Veneri. Nice. <laughs> they were probably buds. Yeah. <laughs> they were chumps. The biggest hands I've ever seen. Oh, my God. They were huge. <laughs> I think when they say giant, they meant giant. Like The pure terror of that scene. We'll talk about that scene. We'll get to his <laughs> giant hands. Uh, but yeah, so here, here's my here's my trivia for you. This is a little trivia because I learned how to count semi recently. Mm. Umberto Rajo in 1972 was in ten films in one year. In one year, Rosal Baneri in uh-huh. 1972 was in thirteen films. <laughs> and just to uh, just to be uh, you know a competitive uh, lady, Barbara Boucher. In 1972, was in 14 films. She's like, Nary, I'll do you one better. Oh. Now, now, were they all directed by Jess Franco? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, story. my God. Jess Franco was like, oops, I directed a film on the toilet. <laughs> my bad. Oh, man. I, I will check out all 14 Barbara Boucher's 1972 films. I'm wondering how many I've seen from that year. That's like... Oh. <laughs> there's got to be one I, there's got to be something no, I, I feel seen. like you've seen them all I just really do think you have alright I'll go look let's do it I'll just let's scroll look. down here I'm scrolling right now because I'm, I'm curious <laughs> I, I feel like you've seen them all I really you know I'll count the ones I have seen I've seen Caliber 9 I've seen a muck I've seen the Smile Before Death where she has an uncredited part as a party guest French Sex Murders uh, Red Queen Kills Seven Times Don't Torture a Duckling and that's it I think I counted five of the fourteen. So yeah, I'm See? I'm I'm, I'm batting low. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I I mean, my tolerance for sex comedies is like in the in the toilet. So I'm <laughs> I'm still sitting on the bench saying, "Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play." <laughs> <laughs> Get this man some sex comedies. Come on now. <laughs> all right. So we're going to talk about the plot here. As uh, mentioned earlier, good old Barbara Boucher as Greta. She has taken a job. As the secretary for for Farley Granger, uh, Mr. Richard Stewart, uh, so that she can look for her pal Sally. And uh, my first favorite moment of the movie is when she meets Farley Granger, and he says the most batshit crazy thing to her. He's like, "You imagine me to be a sea monster with a hundred eyes and a cavernous mouth. You thought at night I grew hands long enough to slap the moon." But that if I should become little once again, I'd cry a river of tears. Now, isn't that so? <laughs> I will play this entire line of crazy shit he says. Nice. I've never in my life heard anything like it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not good. translated wrong over either, right? That's just the way. <laughs> and well, that's the thing. You know, Farley Granger, I've only seen him in maybe two movies. Where he didn't dub himself. Like, I think So Sweet, So Dead, they, someone else dubbed him in that. Mm. Um, and I've definitely seen one other thing where it was not Farley Granger. But usually, you know, some actors have the clout to where they could, you know, dub themselves. It was in their contract. The experience of filming So Sweet, So Dead, he's probably like, ah, I'm not coming back for that. <laughs> not to knock that film, but it's right, right. it's just so grim. It is a great cast in a not very fun film. Mm-hmm. 
but I, I think it's a good movie. But anyway, so then another scene I love is when uh, Greta meets up with the detective and she has a little bit of evidence about something, how something might have happened to Sally. So um, she lets him read her letter. And while the voiceover of Sally is playing, reading this letter, um, the camera just focuses on the reflections of Venice. By the way, this was shot in Venice. Uh, the reflections of Venice in the murky waters of the canals and everything's all trippy and weird and the music's really ethereal. And it's like, oh, man, we're in for it. Yep. What elevates this trashy trash is, I mean, it's we got some sexy ladies, but this is very, like, nicely well-made sexy trash. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, and, of course, speaking of sexy, whew, the, the amazing Barbara Boucher, her, mm. her, whoever was doing her costuming uh, puts her in a nightgown on her first night mm. in the, the villa of the, the, the Stewarts. Greg, you want to talk about this? Uh, talk about this scene here. Yeah, good setup. Where and it's early in the movie, so she's basically we first get a undressing shot of her going into the bathroom, right? And we get a little side boobage, and then she puts the nightgown on, and you know she's doing what she normally would do, go to bed, right? So she goes to the window, it opens, and that's when we hear the blood curdling scream because ah! there's a creepy dude there, right? And then here comes the Richard. You know, what's wrong? And they open the window. Oh, that's just Rocco. It's just, it's all good. It's just Rocco. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> Almost lost life to this giant. <laughs> yeah, that, that's our gentle giant who we'll find yeah. out later is not so gentle. Yeah, right. It's great. I love it. The, um, I, I always have that thing where this, this started with, uh, with, uh, Lena Romay. Um, I've been talking about this a lot on this show for some reason. I think I, I think I might be in love with Lena Romay from all the Jess Franco movies is that, Seeing her naked a billion times, uh-huh. it's hotter when she has clothes on. And Barbara Boucher, depending on who her tailor is, mm-hmm. <laughs> like the designer of this nightgown. <laughs> yeah. Like, woo, man. Wear it all. Down. <laughs> exactly. No, keep it on. Keep it on. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's but anyway, good. in order to calm her down, good old <laughs> Eleonora <laughs> uh, gives uh, Greta a nice, um, a nice bit of drops in her water things get a little crazy what happens it's it's what was that ecstasy like i don't know what he she, she was dropping some mollies i don't know <laughs> dropping something spanish fly <laughs> yeah and it literally only took one sip like she barely drank any water right but we got the scene with barbara in the bed she's laying down panicking and eleonora's like drink the water she drinks and then we get this several well i'm not gonna say several but it, it was quite a few minutes of just slow motion making out scene of two girls completely naked and but i will say though not just the nudity i'm talking the music was beautiful man it oh, was yes. just so perfect uh, it's, it's a great scene honestly i mean barring the nudity it was just really well done and it's so creepy and haunting and beautiful so you don't know what to do you're just sitting there like <laughs> <"That's great." laughs> <laughs> <That's great." laughs> but it, it was awesome i love the slow motion yeah, I need to go to YouTube and look up this composer and see, like, hope that he has a channel with yeah. all of his other stuff in it, because I really need to investigate this guy more. So what would you call that? Like, it was some kind of, uh, I don't know, It was. I'm not saying techno, I mean, it has something going, it was just, I don't know, it was awesome. It was very dreamy. Yes. And it, it was very, like, I wouldn't call it jazzy, because it was more, um, more romantic, kind of. Yeah. like some jazz of course the romance is is not great because it's not consensual <laughs> like no, not at guys all. <laughs> we're drugging here what are we doing i'm i'm always afraid of rosalbanary in the night <laughs> what's she gonna do next <laughs> the next morning she wakes up and she thinks oh that must have all been a dream but mm. she dropped her water glass she knocked her water glass on the floor and there's still like water on the floor in the exact spot so she knows something happened, which might be why she immediately resumes her mission. She's not lulled into this mm-hmm. this sexy ass lifestyle just yet. <laughs> so she goes snooping, and what does she go snooping for? Oh, oh, the scene where down in the cellar is awesome. Yeah, she basically finds some items, but the one thing is, is we get the burned half picture of Sally. So now we know, oh, Sally has been here, and there's something going on, and. Then we get that flash sequence, right? We get the, 
Uh, that was during the scene of the waterfall and Sally in the makeout oh, session. So we know, wait a minute, she said she was friends with him, but now we know <laughs> maybe a little bit more. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> but that was a cool sequence, too. Good music once again. Waterfall. The slow-mo, you know. Slow-mo. <laughs> They're, they got a theme going here. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia Madio is like, I wrote this. I, I'm going to write this. Sure. So next we get um, one of my favorite things that in, happens in this movie is the tape machine porn. Um, there is so much real to real. I wrote in my notes, this movie's too real. And then I wrote comma real to real. LOL. That was in my <laughs> notes. Uh, Greg does not endorse that hideous joke I made. That was hilarious. I'm Thank laughing. you. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll pause. We'll, we'll go take a break. Yeah, here so you, you can keep laughing. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so Greta fires up the old tape recorder. She's supposed to be, um, you know, doing some, some, some typing for, for Richard transcription work. And uh, she gets more than she was expecting. What does she hear on this tape, Greg? Oh, wow. We get the whole scenario of, of murder. Like, right, because he's explaining how he murdered somebody. So we get the backstory, or do we get the backstory, but we get a story of how Sally was murdered, you know, was buried by the Rocco, right? So Rocco had strangled her, right? It's like done in stages. They, they wanted to pad it out a little bit, yeah. I'm assuming. So what they did was, is first, it just talks about him dumping the body in the in the swamps. And it was great because it's like in the night with water and, you know, white from the water or whatever. And somebody drives by or somebody floats by on a boat. He wasn't scared. It's dark, right? <laughs> exactly. That was a great scene, too, though. It is the best shot in the film. Like, I, to me, one of the, like, top ten most iconic shots in a giallo is Barbara Boucher sitting in the dark. The, the tape players in the foreground and she's sitting there, and the light from the window is just doing the stripe of light across her eyes. And she's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I work for a murderer. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> she's like, I mean, I knew he was a murderer when I got here, but I didn't expect him to freaking record it. Yeah, right. <laughs> One of the things I love about this movie is, randomly, they claim that Eleonora has ESP. Oh, yeah. And she goes into this fugue state of, like, I got the vapors kind of like, like passing out, acting crazy. Um, I have no idea when this happens, but it's wonderful. All we needed then was a seance. <laughs> it's almost what we had almost. <laughs> almost. Um, and then uh, we get the news that um, a body has been found in the bog, in the, the local Venetian blog. I said blog. <laughs> blog. <laughs> Whatever. Bog. I'm blogging about my bog body. That's right. Anyway, they find a body, and uh, it's like right around the time that Boucher's acting like she's getting into like this crew. Like she's sort of acting almost like she likes Richard and Eleonora, but this news of the body, like hmm, maybe I'm not really into these fuckers, mm -hmm. these non consensual fuckers. <laughs> The little red riding hood scene. <laughs> oh man! Also, they watch a porno. Oh my god! So crazy, and it was homemade. Yeah, yeah. that was the other thing. I'm like, whoa! You guys spent money doing that. <laughs> oh boy. So so then we finally see the flashback when at a bar of all places, Richard tells Greta all about what happened. Right. What happened that night? What was what was the what was the horrible thing that happened? That they were doing a a party, I guess you would say, one of these sex parties, I guess. But it was Eleonora and Sally was there. And Sally's dancing provocatively. You know, she's doing her thing. She's kind of doped up a little bit, you can tell. And Eleonora's getting off. You know, she's liking that uh, Rocco's there. So she, they have a little bit of make-out session. Do they have sex? I don't know. If it was, mm -hmm. it was the Halloween 1978 sex where you know, it took like two <laughs> seconds and it was done. I don't know. Just say it. But then Rocco goes over and, and he starts playing around with Sally. And that's when the strangulation happens by accident, quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. And she perishes. And Eleanor is shocked. What have you done? Get off of her. <laughs> it was all an accident of murder. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> but man, this scene is brutal. Like, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I remember I used to be such a cold, calculating son of a biscuit when I first started watching these movies that I wasn't like I didn't like scenes like this, like like, like sexual violence. Mm-hmm. I, I always was like, whoa, that happened in the movie I'm watching. You know, now I'm like, oh, I was almost like scared to rewatch a muck because yeah. my 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 tastes have changed. I try to avoid scenes like this. <laughs> I understand. Trust but me. when it's important to the story and you see that it affects people, especially when they're a corpse afterwards. But like the fear is just like it's important for, I think, to record the consequences of something like this yeah, and not make it mm, for titillation. But man, it is scary as shit when you mm. just see the size of Rocco's hands. I was going to say hands. He's got the Andre the Giant hand. Man, her face almost disappears when he starts strangling yeah. her. It's nuts. <laughs> that man is a giant man. Um, but yeah, it's really sad. It's one of those, it's just so depressing. This whole thing is so. But the, what's crazy is that right before. Richard is telling her this story. There's literally a bartender in the room with them. Right. I had never noticed that before. Well, this is my first time watching, so I, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> it appears that he left, but what if he was in earshot? <laughs> oh, God. What if he was like, now that's a fucked up story, you guys. <laughs> Does anybody right. want any refills of J&B? <laughs> Which we get a J&B sighting this late in the game, but damn it, it's there. Was it there? I did not see it. It was in the bar. Yep. Oh, my God. That's I was getting ready to say, all right, well, I'm scratching my my final thoughts. OK, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for telling me that. I just totally missed that. I will do anything to to uh, to inhibit. OK, great. Great. After this, <laughs> it appears that Greta is going to go away with Richard on a train trip. Um, and my, one of my favorite moments is the way that Farley Granger says that he's going to kiss her. He emphasizes the word kiss so mm-hmm. hard. Now I'm going to kiss you. <laughs> and I will play that clip. I would hope I didn't blow out the microphone with that. I'm going I'm to lay that in there. It's just the stupidest thing that made me laugh so hard. And it was like, wow, why, why do you say it like that? <laughs> I won't be in London for more than three days. Now I'm going to kiss you. So anyway, shit goes down, and the the big climax of the movie is foolishly Barbara Boucher's character Greta. She thinks she's gonna like get these people, she's gonna nail them, uh, but then she ends up in the same situation as Sally mm-hmm. with Eleonora and Rocco, and of course Richard comes in, and he you know unlike me who's named Richard, um, he admits that he was there. And that he witnessed the entire thing and did nothing, just like Eleonora did, nothing to stop Sally from getting killed. Um, it's not nice. No. But no. Greta, being the wonderful person that she is, when she was kind of flirting with Rocco earlier in his uh, his little hovel, he, he unfortunately murders an eel. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it was a real eel. It was definitely <laughs> That poor so. eel. Live animal killing on this. <laughs> hey, I know where my tuna fish sandwich comes from, all right? It's yeah, yeah. Full of eel meat. Uh, but he <laughs> he cuts open this eel and, of course, slices his finger. And mm-hmm. she treats his wound. And this gives uh, Rocco this, this, this heartfelt feelings towards Greta. <laughs> so even though, once again, Eleonora's got him drunk. But did you feel like that was a moment that was like, pay attention because of this out of sequence really makes no sense in the movie moment that that was going to play out somewhere. I felt it. And and there, lo and behold, boom. (laughs) See, I've watched too many of these and my brain's like, uh, plot, (laughs) plot happen. Filler. It's all. Yeah. But no, Silvio, good call. Silvio Amadio is, he's a smart dude. He's going to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so instead of, uh, killing Greta, he totally just flips out and (laughs) (laughs) attacks, um, everybody but her and right. good old uh Eleanor gets bashed into the uh the, the fireplace and, and dies from a head injury face plant love it richard feebly tries to stab rocco and gets stabbed with his own knife which apparently is like the greatest fear of every screenwriter ever 
Right. Like, have you ever seen a film that didn't have a person get stabbed with their own knife? Like, ninety nine percent of them, anyway. Exactly. <laughs> That's one of those tropes that I just, I just don't like. I've heard people say like that doesn't happen, and I'm like, hmm. Really? <laughs> Maybe it does. I mean, it seems like the number one cause of death. <laughs> At the end of the film, Greta is like, okay, I've officially had enough of Venice. I hope mm. this place fucking sinks. I'm leaving. As the the detective who's been kind of flirting with Greta a little bit, and rightfully so because it's Barbara Boucher, and also he's got the badass clip-on sunglasses, <laughs> he uh, wishes her well by buying her a box of candy. And at the last moment, he just blurts out, oh, by the way, the body they found in the bog wasn't sally right nonchalant too though yeah we get the fin <laughs> yes he's like i'm btw yeah. <laughs> and as the train is pulling away you see barbara boucher is so good she's so great her smile fades yeah like oh i probably shouldn't have gotten on this train i need to get back in here and go help you look through the bog <laughs> And that is a muck. That is the entire a muckington. Mr. Relaxation has done that. <laughs> I almost forgot. I had to say Mr. Relaxation. You brought it. Perry Como, SCTV. Go to YouTube. It's on there. Three minutes. My favorite three minutes ever. It's great. Freaking gold. I've just seen it. I'm telling you, it's gold. <laughs> of course, my favorite is uh, John Candy going, Oi. Oi. <laughs> yeah, <he> wants, yeah. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> oh, God. That's good stuff. Hi, what did you think of the show? Well, some people call him Mr. Relaxation. I thought tonight's show was a little up tempo, but he's still my favorite entertainer. Last time I saw him was 14 years ago in the Holy Land. I think you, you told me the trivia about this that someone very special was supposed to be in this movie, in, uh, I believe, in Barbara Boucher's role. As Greta. Now, what, who was it and why couldn't they make it? Edward Finnich. And we yes. all know Edward Finnich. Of course. Wow. And she could not be in the movie due to supposedly she was pregnant with Edwin Finnich, her son. How did a woman who looks like that find someone to have sex with her? I don't know. It's, it's, it's a miracle. Miracles. You know what? It takes all kinds, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> all kinds of critters to make it this and that's another thing that I really wish I'd read that shock cinema. There's a great interview with Barbara Boucher in shock cinema magazine, Barbara Boucher and Edwidge had a nice little uh, rivalry. Mm -hmm. uh, Barbara Boucher claims that it was all on Edwidge. She's like, Oh no, I liked her. She didn't like me. Mm. Mm. It's like, sure. So we had really beef. Like I was really beef on these two. <laughs> this is cool. We should have had a shootout like a duel. Dude. I mean, I could see them stealing roles from each other. Like totally like, just showing up to the interview, just like the like the casting thing, just a little bit earlier. Yeah, I've been here since five a.m. You fucking bitch. I, I talked to a uh, this little side note, and I'm trying not to go down a rabbit hole. But Douglas Tate, I don't know if you know who Douglas Tate is, but um, stunt actor, him and Derek Mears. Okay, now who, if you know anything about these guys, Derek Mears and Douglas Tate, body size, height wise, are identical. They they could be twins. All right, not facial, but body wise. So Douglas Tate, I talked to him several years ago at a convention. I'll never forget it. He's like, well, up, Derek Mears. That was his competition. Like they, they love each other, but he could never get a role over Derek Mears. Derek, you know, Derek was in Friday the 13th. He was in all these different movies and, and Douglas Tate could never freaking get the roles. Right. Cause he's like, Oh, this <laughs> bastard. Where I go, it's always me and him going for the role and he's always getting it over. He says, yeah, nice. but his, his shining moment, Douglas Tate was that he was in Friday the 13th. Uh, Freddie versus Jason. Oh, nice. He made it. He made it at the end of that. So he, he's cool. But anyways, that's not, I'm thinking of that as the beef as Barbara Boucher and Edward Finnish. Well, <laughs> you know, they did a different kind of stunt work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Much more. I think that was it. Um, just I was just amazed at the way this was marketed with all the different retitlings and everything. It was crazy. They really were pushing this movie pretty hard. Oh, absolutely. I like the other name, Amok. <laughs> like, what you mean? Also known as Amok with an exclamation. It's, it's just beautiful. It's beautiful. So, so Greg, did you have any final thoughts about good old Amok? 
No, I, I think we covered it well. And I mean, it's just, it was a first time viewing for me. And nice. I appreciate the opportunity to watch it and talk about it because I actually really enjoyed this one. It was yeah. Jallo, I will say Jallo light, but still yeah. in the realm. It's, it's that, it's that, um, that uh, high society thing where uh, a lot of Gialli are about like the bad behavior of the rich and mm-hmm. uh, the jet setting set, you know, and this is absolutely that where it's like, oh, look at these poor little rich girls and poor little rich boys who have to get up to their kinky stuff because they're so bored with <laughs> life. It's like they don't have to work all day. It's like, look, yeah, right. people who yeah, work 40 hours a week can be perverts. Am I right, Greg? Sure. Oh, why not? Right. <laughs> And we did, because I was going to say, like, we had zero J&B, but we did have J&B. I'm, I've been corrected. We did have spoken. I didn't see Aster Cigarettes. I know. We did have I know. We'll do uh, five more viewings, and you'll spot that J&B. Because, <laughs> <laughs> nice. you know, I got this back in the day when I didn't have a lot of Gialli to watch. You know, there was like like this, and Night, of the Eve- Night Evelyn came out of her grave. Uh, um, I used to watch the that over and over again. This one I saw many, many times. But yeah, I love this because Barbara Boucher and Rosalba Neri are unreal. They're so gorgeous mm-hmm. that it's just, I can't even fathom it. Like, yeah, I'm so glad they, they don't do conventions in America that I know of. <laughs> I just feel like stuttering. Like, I, I've seen you nude so much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love the, the little, even I'll take it, the little tiny hint of the supernatural. It's barely mm-hmm. in the movie. Oh, yeah. But Very. I'll take it. Um, I don't want the eel abuse. Um, I, I really didn't like the duck hunting, but I, you know what? I'm trying to make peace with these these dead animals in movies. Like it's already, uh, yeah, it's already filmed. I was waiting for the director to fall into the quicksand after that scene. Why are we killing ducks <laughs> on here? Why you get in the quicksand? And there's so many great fake duck hunting scenes <laughs> where they just throw the dead bird in the air. Yeah, like in um, oh god, what was that one? Uh, Oh yeah, uh, murder obsession. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody shot shit that day. That shit uh, was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> this one they're shooting. They're, they're straight up killing ducks. So. Boo! I mean, I mean, ducks are so dumb. Give them a chance. You know, I'm still gonna eat a duck, and I will eventually eat more eel because I eat sushi a lot. So I, I'm not a sushi eater, so I don't eat eel. So <laughs> I'm not gonna go <laughs> no, vegetarian no. over this. No, uh, hell no. Um, and my, of course, my last thing about this is. Um, no, that was it. Yay. Woo-hoo. We did it. We did it. So, so Greg, before I let you escape, run out of here and, and, and move on with your life from this terrible experience. Um, what is a f- recently seen and loved film? Uh, you know, I went through my letterbox cause I've been watching a lot of old movies lately. Nice. Okay. Uh, reason being we're doing our 1970s, uh, flashback sequence stuff. So um, we're in the year 1972 right now. So I've been watching a ton of 1972. Great year. I love it. And it was. And the one, there was two that I watched. I'll, I'll pick one, but the one I, I'm not going to talk about is Frenzy. Uh, I had never seen Alfred Hitchcock's Frenzy. Oh, wow. So I finally, I rented it, checked it out, really enjoyed it. Uh, but the one that really, you know, and I've seen it multiple times is Brian De Palma's Sisters. Oh yeah, I love Sisters, man, and and that movie I've seen it a few times now, but watching it this last time was just, I was like, oh, the the chef kiss. I was like, man, this <laughs> this movie's great, man. It's so great. Margot Kidder is freaking phenomenal. Uh, so yeah, that wow. that's probably the best one I've seen recently. Nice. Uh, like I've been in the seventies. Yeah, I I was used to dislike De Palma, not for the subject matter. I love his, his movies are freaking great. I had a thing with, I, I was against his affectations, like the split screen. Right. And some of the, 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 the higher dramatics, like the, the heightened stuff. And then I realized that everything I watch has these affectations, just not, maybe not split screen specifically, but like everything is so amped up and crazy. And I just kick, I've been kicking myself and going back and it's like, getting to watch his stuff for the first time again. Like, like blowout. Yeah. Blow- oh, freaking man. It's probably my favorite of all. Oh my God. I, I went ahead and just, I just knew I hadn't seen blowout for over 20 years and mm. I was just, Oh, it's a criterion sale. Do it. 
And then yeah. I watched it. I was like, I'm an idiot for not liking this the first time. Um, same yeah. thing. I haven't seen Body Double since I kind of liked it. And I know I'm going to be like, you moron. <laughs> oh, right. I'm telling you, it's great. Oh, God, gotta, yeah. Gotta take a shower. So, Sisters, uh, Sisters, I'm looking forward to revisiting. Are you a fan of Phantom of the Paradise? I love it. That, that was one that I had read about and seen reviews of and had never watched it and just bought it on a whim. And Lietta and I, we, we were like, whoa. Yeah. Holy shit. And anyone who makes that much use of, uh, of uh, oh my God, I can only think of her as Susie Banyan. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, in, what is her name? In the movie, what is what is what is the actress who played Susie Banyan in Suspiria? Oh shit! Um, um, now you put me on. Ah, oh, it's gone. I got a follower on Facebook on uh, Twitter. Um, oh, dude, I'm sorry, I broke your brain. <laughs> you broke my brain. Uh, Jessica Harper. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm telling you, the older I get, for those of you out there who aren't in your mid to late forties, hang in there. Um, <laughs> you, when you get there. Forget actors' names and yeah. directors' names. Yeah. Uh, you'll remember a movie real well, but mm-hmm. the title of it, nah, it might not come back. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, I love that. Um, but yeah, as far as Frenzy goes, uh, yeah, Frenzy's great. What a what a freaking brutal movie. I had not seen it, and I've heard. I'm shocked. Dave Becker talk about it. People talk about it. I was like, and Alfred Hitchcock's probably my second favorite director of all time. Nice. So I'm sitting here like, dude, I've got to see it. It's 72 perfect time and rented it. Best three ninety nine I've ever spent. Oh my God. <laughs> so, <it's, laughs> but my recently seen uh, and loved is a, is one that I have always really enjoyed and it just is getting a criterion Blu-ray. It is the heroic trio from 1993. Um, a beautiful trio of, badass Hong Kong actresses as the superheroes in a movie. Mm -hmm. Um, It is pure cinematic cocaine. It is, I am, I can't believe Criterion is starting to do some crazy Hong Kong stuff. Right. It's, it's perfect. Um, It comes with a sequel, which I, I think is okay. Um, I definitely was prepared to dislike it because nobody liked that sequel when it came out, but it's, it's, it's watchable. But yeah, I highly recommend Heroic Trio. Johnny Toe is a force to be reckoned with, and this movie is his his directing is batshit crazy. Wow. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at imagery right now, and yeah, this is definitely right up my alley. Apparently, um, Batman 1989's Batman was an inspiration, and a couple other things, but. One of the characters is named uh, Wonder Woman, but she's as far from the American <laughs> Wonder Woman. She's more like the Batman right, of right. the movie, and but it's just such a fucking insane movie. Um, uh, I love Michelle Yao, yeah, and uh, and her character is is conflicted in this one, and she's just so good. But um, it, you've you've never seen anything quite like Heroic Trio. It is <laughs> it is out it is outstanding, and the fact that. You know, Criterion, they always do their movies justice, obviously, sure. Sure. but this is a perfect transfer. I mean, wow. for a movie that I saw on a freaking bootleg, uh-huh. not pan and scan, but where it's full frame, but it's also widescreen. Right. So the, t- the picture on your TV is super small. That's how I saw Heroic Trio. Okay. And it's, it's great. But also uh, Criterion Channel apparently had uh, Ricky O, the story of Ricky. Okay. Oh boy. It is a splatter kung fu movie. Um it's action so it's action horror kung fu with like body morphing comic book craziness. Like um the director wanted to do a direct comic book to screen adaptation, so all of the body horror from the manga mm. is literally in the film. Oh. And dude, it's nuts. And that's not even the craziest part of the movie. The di- the dubbing is <laughs> unreal. You think Italian films get weird dubbing? Mm-hmm. Hong Kong movies, it is so insane. <laughs> um, so maybe, maybe Story of Ricky will get a Blu-ray from Criteria. And that would, I saw the old DVD. Mm. Um, do you remember The Daily Show? Yeah. Uh, the old, old, old Daily Show. They used to have... Um, 
this this gif of a, a, a quick clip of this huge guy in a Hong Kong movie slapping his hands together mm. and making this dude's head explode. <laughs> and they used to play that before they had like a, a little trivia challenge or like a question time. Mm-hmm. And they would always show the clip of this guy like just smacking his hands together and making this guy's head explode. And I saw that on the daily show for years, having no idea what it was. Right. But sure enough, that was from story of Ricky. Wow. And that's not even the, 10th craziest thing in that movie <laughs> it's like way down below <laughs> it's like dude you like have no idea credits. <laughs> i'm telling you i've never seen anything like it but that's my that's my 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 recently seen in a in a, a bonus a bonus film nice i wrote them down so i can check them out man that's i i can't guarantee heroic trio will, will hit for you i think you'll enjoy it but i definitely think mm-hmm. story of ricky will just knock you out <laughs> it's so good I love me some Asian cinema, so I'm sure uh, yeah. uh, we're actually going to be doing the Vengeance trilogy uh, coming up here in the next few weeks. On the, oh on man, the first time watches. I've not seen Old Boy or any of these. So. Oh boy, yeah, those are those are classics, absolute classics. Nice. Well, Greg, well, you got to tell people how they can find you. What 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 is Greg and Mortis? What you, what's your all about? Oh man, what, what's your all about? What is? I don't know what I just said. <laughs> what is my flashing backing? Uh, wow. Well, as far as to here, uh, you can check me out, of course, on the podcast, Land of the Creeps, which is landofthecreeps.blogspot.com, uh, where myself, my wife, the Twisted Temptress Pearl, and we got Dr. Shock Dave Becker and Bill the Butcher Van Bagel. Uh, every other week on Tuesdays, we talk horror. And then we got a side, we call it a presented by, which is every other Friday. We, I know it sounds odd. We come out weekly, but on every other Friday, Ian Erz and I have what's called Black Love Mysteries, where we are covering Italian giallo, as well as we're throwing in some Polizia. We're doing some Italian spaghetti western, just anything Italian. We did awesome. do Blast Fighter recently, uh, so we were throwing in some cheese. Uh, so we do that every other Friday. And then my wife and I also do a segment called Mortis Vision, where we originally started doing television horror and we've kind of switched up. We do that, but we also do made for television horror or we just do random BS talk and we have fun. So that's where you can follow us there. And I'm also on a podcast called Jay of the Dead's new horror movie podcast with nine other hosts. So we're, we're called the Avengers. I guess Jay calls us Jay of the Dead, (laughs) the horror Avengers. So we got Dave Z from a lot of the horror world will know and Dr. Shock and, Oh my God, Gilman Joel. So I, I don't want to go through the list because there's so many and I love everyone. <laughs> uh, cool. Check out Jay the Dead's new horror movie podcast where we review new movies. And I also have a segment called uh, Monsters on the Mantle where I look at 1950 horror movies, 1950s. So I get into all the monster movies. And pick them oh, up. nice. Uh, so I've been doing that for a little while. So that's what I do on that side. So Damn. Uh, you can also, if you want to get in touch with me, email me, G-R-E-G-A-M-O-R-T-I-S-666 at gmail.com. So that's gregamortis666 at gmail.com. Or follow me over at Facebook, Instagram, X, all them places. Just look up Greg and Mortis, you'll find me. How long have you been doing Land of the Creeps? I started Land of the Creeps in February, I had this wrote down. I think it was February 2011 when I started. Oh, wow. the Creeps. And nice. I started podcasting in 2010. Uh, I had an original show. It was called The Creeps Your Feature Horror Show. Wow. So that was way, way back in the day. And then that morphed into a side job where I was working with a guy named Bill Shetty doing Planet Macabre. And that spawned over to Horror Palace Network, which spawned over to me changing the name of the Creeps or feature over to Land of the Creeps. So, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> Jeez, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, because because Brad and I, we were we were really obsessed with the Nashi cast mm-hmm. back in 2010, like 20, 2009, 2010, whenever they started, we were right. I don't know. I don't doubt we were their first listeners, but we were definitely in that in those early years. Mm-hmm. And Brad was like, oh, we should do a podcast. I was like, all right, let's just steal their format and do it. Right. So. Hey, that's always, but yeah, that was 2011, like May or something like that. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, it's crazy how time flies. Like that's basically myself and my original podcast partner at the time went by Dr. Butcher. Now he goes by Dr. Dirty and he doesn't podcast anymore. But 
I still keep in touch with him. His name's Joe. Oh, yeah, Great guy. Yeah. And uh, Joe and I did Italian cinema on Land of the Creeks for a while. And uh, he was so, he's much like Ian, man. He is all about Italian cinema. So I, I like to put myself <laughs> with people that are kind of um, better informed than I am. So I put myself in the middle of it like, okay, Joe was so good at Italian cinema. Let me get in there. And he introduced me. And now Ian is just like a maestro. So I follow him on. I'm on his coattails, like, all right, Ian, I'm, I'm listening to you, buddy. <laughs> Giddy up, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you got to soak it up. You're just like, hey, I'm here. I'm vibing I'm, with you guys. I, I, there you go. I'm riding the coattails, and I'm loving every second of it. But but that's where you can follow us at. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for hanging out. I, I, we, we took a long time to get to this. <laughs> <laughs> this is great, man. I've had a blast. Hell yeah. All right, folks. Take care. Have a wonderful time. And bye. Wait. Folks, thanks so much for listening to this episode. If you'd like to write into the show, send an email to doomedmoviethon at gmail or hit us up at doomedmoviethon on Instagram or at doomedmoviethon on Twitter or at doomedmoviethon at Discord or go to Hello This Is The Doom Show on Facebook and message us there. If you want more Hello This Is The Doom Show, go to doomedmoviethon.com and click the podcast button for the archive or go to YouTube and look up Doomed Movie Thon and you'll find the classic episodes of Hello, This is the Doomed Show. And if that's still not enough, um, I have written some books, you know, about my love of movies over on Amazon.com. Uh, just look up Richard Glenn Schmidt and you'll find Giallo Meltdown, A Movie Thon Diary, Giallo Meltdown 2, Cinema Somnambulist, or Doomed Movie Thon, the book. Hello, This is the Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Go to legionpodcast.com and check out the other great shows over there.